Hi, welcome back. Aubrey Williams here, fresh from Camp Fi Rocky Mountain, week 1.5, 2025, where I presented Everyone Adjusts Using Risk-Based Guardrails with Historical Analysis to Plan to Adjust, Reach Fi Sooner, and Spend More Once You Are Fi. So I made this video so you can see how it's done. It might be a little new, might be a little unfamiliar, so hopefully this makes it easier and you get the hang of it. So I made instructions, and there's written instructions, which you're seeing right there. This guide is the video guide that's me meant to make it even easier. So here we go. The link to these descriptions, the spreadsheet, and FireCalc, which is the historical analysis tool that I'm using, totally free, will be in the description. So here we go. Okay, this is the spreadsheet which I created. This is used to collect the values that you're gonna put into FireCalc and then to collect the output of FireCalc to build these guardrails right here. These are built automatically using the numbers you enter. I created this spreadsheet to make it easier for you. So let's look at some of the numbers that we're gonna work with. The numbers in blue are the only ones that you need to enter. Anything in black is automatically calculated. So we're gonna start with a million dollar portfolio. It's 75% stocks. We're planning for a 50 year retirement. We have two people, they're both 42 years old. The year is 2025, that's calculated automatically. They have social security and they're gonna take it at age 67, both of them. It's $1,500 a month and that times 12 is $18,000. And then as far as our parameters of the chance of underspending that we're gonna use, you'll notice I'm not saying chance of success. We're gonna leave that language behind. Translate chance of success to chance of underspending because we have to invert, always invert to understand. When we say chance of success, that means a 100% chance of underspending, as in you are guaranteed to end up with at least some money and very likely a large amount of money at the end of your life. That's underspending. That's not all bad. Overspending is also a problem. So we adjust so that we don't do either one. And by not choosing a 100% chance of underspending, we choose 90%, we adjust from there. So if that's our starting value, then we need to pick our lower guardrail. And for that, we're choosing a 75% chance of underspending. And for our top guardrail, we're picking a 100% chance of underspending. So those are all documented here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is calculate our safe withdrawal rate, our fixed fail safe safe withdrawal rate. This is the 100% chance of underspending that you're used to, the 4% rule. So let's jump over to FireCalc. Okay, we're gonna go to FireCalc right to the beginning. This is what'll come up. And we're gonna enter the portfolio value here, $1 million. And number of years, we're gonna put in 50. Those were already in there, but just in case they're not, that's what you do. We don't need to worry about spending because that's what we're calculating. And so you can leave that as it is, it doesn't matter. As far as other income spending, we're gonna put in $18,000 for each of the people in this model. And that's from the spreadsheet, the year 2050, that's when they'll be 67. That's from the spreadsheet. That's why we use the spreadsheet because it calculates and has these numbers handy, so you can enter them in right here. 18,000 and 2050 for this one also. Okay, the not retired tab, you can leave that alone. We're assuming we retire immediately. Spending models, you can leave this alone. No changes needed. In your portfolio, we wanna make sure that this says 75%, that's our percent stocks. That is the default value, so if for some reason it shows up with anything else, change it. We want total market selected, and we need to make sure that the expense ratio is appropriate. For this, I'm gonna model having VTI and BND 
and both of those have a 0.03% expense ratio. If yours is different, put it in there. If it's above 0.1, I'd say take a real close look at that. Make sure those investments are earning their way into your portfolio. If it's like this 0 0.03, 0 0.05, 0 0.09, that's great. If it's more than that, doesn't mean that's necessarily the wrong call, but I'd make sure that I'm invested in something that I couldn't find cheaper elsewhere as far as expense ratio. Okay, portfolio changes. If any big amounts of money are coming into your portfolio, like an inheritance, or if you're selling a house and cash is coming into your investable assets, that would be an addition. If you're buying a house, maybe after you sell one house and buy another, that would be a subtraction. We don't have any of those in this model, but in case you did, this is where they'd go. Okay, and then finally to investigate, and we're going to choose spending level because that's what we're calculating and 100% since we want to calculate the fail safe, safe withdrawal rate. And here we go. And we find out it is for that million dollar portfolio, $38,921. All right, let's go back to the spreadsheet. We'll put in 38,921 right there. That tells us we have a 3.89% safe withdrawal rate. And 38,921, which is a gross income number. Gross meaning there's still taxes that need to be taken out of it. Always important to remember the 4% rule uh, did not incorporate taxes. So your actual spendable income would be a little lower. So you might be wondering why is it 3.89% and not 4%? I thought this was the 4% rule, fail safe, safe withdrawal rate. There's a couple of differences. The Trinity study was done on a 50-50 stock and bond portfolio. It was done without any uh, cash inflows like Social Security, and it was for a 30-year retirement. So we've changed that in a couple of ways. We start off with the same million dollars, but it's a 50-year retirement, and that drives the safe withdrawal rate down. The fact that we have Social Security coming in, $1,500 a month for each person, that drives the safe withdrawal rate up, as does the 75% stock asset allocation, and we end up at 3.89. But it's really the longer that 50-year uh, retirement horizon that drives it below 4%. So that's a good thing to know. Um, just by going uh, 11 basis points lower, with those other factors incorporated, we're able to make it an extra 20 years. And that's something I emphasize in my presentation, that small adjustments matter. Adjustments that are too high matter. If you were to stick with them for the length of the portfolio, that could cause you to run out of money. In the Trinity study, even four and a quarter percent caused portfolios not to reach the 30 years that they were going for. So small adjustments matter. That doesn't mean don't adjust, that's the exact reason why adjusting intelligently using a tool such as this can give us so much power and allow us to reach phi sooner and spend more once you phi. So now let's go back. We know what the fixed safe withdrawal rate is. Let's figure out the risk-based guardrails and how we adjust. Okay, so we're back in FireCalc and now we're going to go back to the start. Million dollars. 50 years, nothing changes there. The only thing that changes is in the investigate tab, instead of 100%, we enter 90%. Let's see what we get. Okay, so 90%, we get, instead of 38,921, we get 44,561. So a 4.46% withdrawal rate by dropping down that 10%. So let's enter that into our spreadsheet. 44,561, that's $3,713 a month. And that's a withdrawal rate of 4.46%. So that's a pretty significant difference. You know, almost half a percent from 3.89 to 4.46. So, if we weren't adjusting, we wouldn't be able to do that. That's made possible by what we're going to do next, which is defining the guardrails. Okay, so next step, 
let's figure out the lower guard rail amount. So now we're going to use the 75% chance of underspending and figure out what portfolio value that would represent. So let's go back to fire calc. And in this case, we're going to put in the spending number, which we just figured out. So we know that we want to spend 44,561. We don't know what the portfolio value is. That's what we're going to calculate. So we're going to go right back to investigate starting portfolio value and make this 75%. So what did we do? We changed the spending number. We changed this to 75% and we are calculating starting portfolio value. There we go. And so if we want to spend $44,561 a year with a 75% chance of underspending, the portfolio value that corresponds to that is $890,000. All right, so we'll take that value and we'll fill that in right here, our lower guardrail portfolio amount. And that's a drawdown from the original million dollars of 109K or 10.9%. And now we'll go back to FireCal and figure out, okay, if our portfolio did fall to $890,000, how would we need to adjust our spending from that original 44K? What would we need to adjust it to to get us back to a 90% chance of underspending? So let's go back to FireCalc. All right, so now we'll go back to start here. We know that our portfolio value is now 890,579. We're going to calculate this spending number so we don't need to change it because that's what we're calculating. Go back to investigate, we change this to 90, and we're calculating the spending level. Aha! So instead of the 44,561, we have to adjust downward to 40,000, 40k a year, to bring our chance of underspending back up to 90%. So we'll take this number and enter it into our spreadsheet. 40,320, that's 3,360 a month. An adjustment of $353, 9.5% less. And now our withdrawal rate when our portfolio hit that 890K, we adjusted and we're back at a 4.53 percent withdrawal rate with a 90% chance of underspending, also known as a 90% chance of success. Okay, so that's how we adjust. Now let's look at the upper guardrail, because just like if our portfolio were to drop and we adjust to bring us back to the chance of underspending that we want, if our portfolio rises, and we all hope it does, we get to increase our spending. So let's see how that works. So going back to fire calc, we're going to change the portfolio value. We're going, okay, let's take that over. We're going to find the portfolio value that represents a 100% chance of success with the spending level that we found out at the start. So let's go back to the start. This is our spending level. We're going to calculate our portfolio value. And so we just go to investigate 100% and we're calculating the portfolio value. So what portfolio value would we need with the spending level that we calculated at a 90% chance of underspending, 44,561 a year, to have a 100% chance of success. And that's 1,174,312. So 174K of growth, and then we will have hit the upper guardrail. All right, so let's take this number, put it back in the spreadsheet. 
1,174,312. That's a 17.4% increase. 174K more in the portfolio. Now, we've hit our upper guardrail. Now we need to increase our spending to get us back to a 90% chance of underspending. So this is where we increase our spending. Let's go back to FireCalc. We want to figure out at this new portfolio value of 1,174,312, what is the spending level that'll get us 90% chance of underspending. And here we go. 51,325. And we'll take that and put that in our spreadsheet. 51,325. That's an increase of 4,277 bucks a year or an extra 560 bucks a month. That represents a 15.2% increase. And now our withdrawal rate is 4.37%. And that's it. We now have our initial portfolio value, a million dollars, how much we can withdraw each month and be at a 90% chance of underspending. And that's 3,713 bucks a month. We know our lower guardrail, that if our portfolio were to drop 10.9% or 109K down to 890, 579, then and only then would we drop our spending by 353 bucks a month or 9.5%. And that would bring us back to 90% chance of underspending. Now, if things went up, and we always hope they do, we would keep our spending the same until we hit 1,174,312 or a 17.4% increase. And at that point, to bring us back to a 90% chance of underspending, we'd increase our spending by 15.2%, $563 to $42.77. And that's it. You've got your guardrails. You can update this monthly. You can update this quarterly, you can update it annually, and that's how it's done. And once you do it a few times, you can do it in five minutes. It's very quick. Use this video. Please tell me how I can make it clear, how I can improve it. This is what some professional financial planner software is doing. In the background, uh, the only software that I'm aware of that's doing this in an automated way is a tool called Income Laboratory. I use it, it's helpful, but this is exactly what it's doing and now you can do it too. Thank you very much, Aubrey Williams, Open Path Financial. Very happy to help and so glad to be a part of your journey to financial independence. Thank you.